These Oculink GPU docks have come a long way, and with the right setup, you can get some absolutely amazing 1440p gaming performance out of your mini PC. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Booster Zero One. Now this is an Oculink GPU dock that supports USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and of course Oculink. Plus, we've got some other great features here, like the fact that we can add extra storage to this unit. It actually supports up to a 4 terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD in the bottom. It's also going to add a ton of extra I.O. to whatever device you have this plugged into. If you watch the channel, you know I'm a huge fan of Oculink, but keep in mind this will work over USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, or Thunderbolt 4. You're just not going to see the same kind of performance that you would over Oculink because it's a much faster connection. With this unit here, inside of the box I received the eGPU, a 230 watt power supply, and a USB 4 cable. Unfortunately, this did not come with an Oculink cable, but I do have one to go along with this, so we're going to be testing it out over Oculink in this video. It's not a bad looking device, and the final product will look a little bit different. I believe they're going to have that Booster R logo up front. But around back, we've got a lot of I.O. here. We can connect up to four different displays to this unit, whether you use USB 4 or Oculink. So we've got two display ports, two full-size HDMI ports, Oculink, USB 4, power input, gigabit ethernet, USB 3, and over on the side we've actually got a full-size SD card slot, which is the first time I'm seeing this on one of these eGPUs. So if you needed extra I.O. for your mini PC or handheld, this would definitely have you covered. The company who's producing this will be launching an Indiegogo, and the early bird special is going to be going for $4.99, making it the cheapest Oculink eGPU with these kind of specs on the market right now, which is definitely great to see. And when it comes to the overall specs, this is actually utilizing the AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT with 8 gigs of GDDR6. We can do up to 120 watts here using the booster mode button on the top. It supports an M.2 SSD up to 4 terabytes. And of course, you can connect this to your device either using USB 4 or Oculink. USB 4 is going to run at a maximum rate of 40 gigs, but when it comes to Oculink, that goes up to 64. So you can get much better performance out of something like this using Oculink. And we've seen a lot of different handhelds and mini PCs hitting the market with that port installed. And it's also starting to hit the mainstream because Lenovo does have a laptop planned with an Oculink port. Plus, they've got an Oculink dock, which is definitely going to cost an arm and a leg. But getting something like this for said price with that early bird special would be really nice. Getting in here to add a little extra storage to your unit is super simple. Got this hatch down here, it just kind of pops right off. And now we can add an M.2 SSD. But this is going to be running over a USB bus. So personally, I wouldn't splurge for like a Gen 4 SSD. I would go with the Gen 3, which is going to be plenty. I'm going to be going with this crucial one terabyte drive here, and we will be doing some speed testing just to see what we can get out of this thing. But you know, storing extra games on something that just doesn't have enough storage using this drive would be perfectly fine. In this first look video, I'm strictly going to be testing out Oculink, but if you want to see this running over Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, let me know in the comments below. I can go with a totally different PC, but what I'm going to be connecting this to today is a brand new mini PC that recently hit the market. It's known as the Atom Man X7Ti, and it's actually Menace Forum sub-brand. Pretty powerful little system. It supports Oculink and USB 4. And speaking of that, Oculink is going to give you that video signal, so if you just wanted to use that single cable, you definitely could. But with this single cable, we're only going to get that video signal. If you want to use the M.2 slot, you will need to connect the USB and Oculink at the same time. But don't worry, because it's automatically going to default to Oculink for our signal, so we get that really fast bus. Now, on the top, we've got this button, which will allow us to bring the TGP, or total graphics power, up to 120 watts. And I've got my USB 4 and Oculink plugged right into this mini PC. I'm going to go ahead and boot it up. Get into Windows real quick. And personally, since I've been testing this GPU dock, I've just left it in 120 watt mode. And one thing you might notice here is the little mini PC we're using actually has a built-in screen. Like I mentioned, this is the Atom Man X7 Ti from Menace Forum. It's their new sub brand. I did a video on it. I'll leave a link in the description. I will be in performance mode with this unit, but we've got 16 cores, 22 threads, and instead of using the built-in iGPU with this mini PC, we can now get access to that RX 7600 MXT. Also got access to that M.2 drive, just a crucial P3 plus one terabyte drive, 
And I will be connecting this to my game capture in just a second so we can get a better look at everything, but I wanted to go ahead and start up a game and see what we could do. Now with everything I'm going to be testing in this video, I'm going to try to go to 1440p here. And the first game we have is Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high settings. And we're seeing averages up in the 80s with this game at 1440p, very high. And since we're using Oculink, we've got that much faster bus speed up to 64 gigs as opposed to USB 4s or Thunderbolt 4s 40 gig, which will definitely net us better performance out of this eGPU. Before we jump into testing, I wanted to give you a rundown here because usually when I'm testing, I use a Ryzen mini PC with Oculink. But today we've got that Core Ultra 9 185H, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. And with the eGPU attached, we still got access to the art graphics. But instead of using that, we're going to be using this Radeon RX 7600 MXT. I do have the turbo button on top pressed. So theoretically, we should be able to hit 120 watts with this GPU. But this should offer a significant jump in performance over the uh, art graphics here. And I'll tell you what, this Ultra 9 185H isn't a slouch either. 16 cores, 22 threads. Just running this up, I'm in performance mode. Jumps up to 60 watts. And it will do kind of a sustained 60 watt across the board with the cooler that Menace Forum has implemented with this new mini PC. And to give you a look at the power draw on this eGPU. Running Furmark. 99% utilization. GPU power right there at 120 watts. I can disable it. And now you can see it drops down to 100 watts. Back up to 120 with that turbo enabled. So with all that out of the way, let's get into some more testing. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And 3 Mark was recently updated with a new benchmark. So we did run that at the end of this. But the first one we have here is Firestrike. Total score, 24,685. I also ran Time Spy. We got a 10,165, and this is looking great. And the final one we ran here was the brand new 3D Mark benchmark, which I haven't run on any other PC yet. And they're calling it Steel Nomad. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if this is a good score or not, because this is the first time I'm running it. We got a 2,159, but I will put this into rotation with future PCs so we can kind of get an idea of how this benchmark works. And since this GPU dock has support for an NVMe SSD, I wanted to run a speed test on this. And remember, the SSD I installed is just a Gen 3. It's a crucial P3 Plus, so it's not the fastest drive in the world. And we're running over USB here. It is USB 4. And this is what I was kind of expecting. I mean, we've got speeds here. We could definitely run an operating system from this, but they're nowhere near what an internal Gen 4 SSD can do. Either way, running games directly from this drive, you're really not going to have an issue downloading or launching those games. Now it's time to jump back into some more PC game testing. And I did want to run this. This is one that I like to test on all of these PCs. 1440p, and at the end of this run, we had an average of 81 FPS. So more than playable here with this external GPU. Next up, we've got the built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Ultra settings, but I am using FSR 3.0 set to balanced and AMD's frame generation. So we can get on up there. And by the end, we had an average of 153 and a low of 63. So even at those ultra settings, 1440p, we could definitely play through this game just fine. Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, Ultra. Don't need any scaling for this one. I knew that 7600 MXT was going to handle it just fine. Taking a look at Afterburner, up in the top left-hand corner, you can see that, yeah, it's really using that GPU up to around 105, 106 watts here. And we're getting an average over 100 FPS at 1440p. I also wanted to throw an older one in here. We've got Fallout 4, 1440p Ultra, and you can see every once in a while we get that dip. And this is the latest update to Fallout 4 from Bethesda. I've noticed this same dip on even higher end systems. I'm 100% sure that this GPU does have more than enough power to play this game. It really comes down to optimizations with the game itself. Horizon Forbidden West. This is one of those games that I've been doing a lot of testing with external GPUs via Oculink or USB 4. I've noticed that the game really doesn't like these external GPUs. It wants much more bandwidth. So right now, I dropped this down to 1080 medium. And as you can see, we are getting a pretty good frame rate. 
but as soon as I take this up to 1440 medium, it falls right under 60. Just a little unfortunate, but it's a newer game to PC, and as time goes on, I think we'll see a little better performance. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1440p high with FSR set to balanced. We definitely need that FSR to get up to 1440p, and going to Ultra, you will have to take FSR to performance to get a really good frame rate out of it. But it is playable like this, and I was actually having a really good time with this one. Overall, seeing some great performance out of this over Oculink, and like I mentioned, if you'd like to see this tested over Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, let me know in the comments below. I wanted to get Oculink out of the way because I knew we'd see the best performance out of that. And yeah, this can definitely turn your mini PC or handheld into a full-fledged gaming PC capable of running AAA games at 1440p. And I've always considered the 7600 MXT a 1440p high card or a 1080 ultra card. So we're not doing 1440p ultra with a lot of the newer AAA stuff, but it's very, very capable the way it is. So what I'm going to do here is leave a link to their official website. They've got it put together. I'm sure they'll be adding some more stuff down the road. And they've also got their Indiegogo link live. It's not officially launched just yet, but definitely keep an eye out. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look video. Again, if you'd like to see this thing tested over USB 4, just let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.